now that we know how to find f prime and f double prime, we can usually start to analyze those graphs and we generally like to try to relate them to each other. One of a popular AP questions would be to try to find out like if I knew what f prime was, can you draw a picture of f or do you know if you know what f double prime is, can you draw a picture of f? So we should be able to, no matter where I start you, you should be able to draw me pictures of what the other functions might look like. So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to use information about f, f prime, and f double prime to analyze graphs. So we're just going to jump right into an example. Um, the first kind of example, you'll notice it says to sketch the graph of a function having the indicated characteristics. Now your function doesn't necessarily have to look just like mine, but it will meet all of the characteristics that are given. Okay, so let's just kind of jump right in this and see if we can figure out what this mess is saying. Okay, first of all, it says f of 0 equals f of 2 equals 0. Well, I know this value right here and this value right here, those are both x values. So basically what they are saying here is when x equals 0, y equals 0, and when 2 equals 0, y equals 0. So basically this first statement is letting me know that 0, 0, and 2, 0 are points on my graph. So I'm going to try to... 0, 0, and 2, 0 are points on my graph. Okay, the next thing that I know is this is telling me about my first derivative, and so I think what I'm going to do for these two right here is I'm actually going to draw a first derivative chart because I think that's a little bit more helpful for me. So I notice that when the, the derivative at 1 is equal to 0. So I'm going to put 1 on my f prime chart because that's what we put. We put our critical numbers on our f prime chart. And then it tells me, whoops, I can actually use that one too. Um, it tells me when x is less than 1, so for all these values over here, my derivative is less than 0. So my derivative is negative. Okay, and then it tells me when x is bigger than 1, so over on the right side of my chart, my derivative is going to be greater than 0, so my derivative is going to be positive. So what does that tell me about the function? It tells me that the function is decreasing until I get to 1, and then it's going to be increasing after 1, because my first derivative tells me about increasing and decreasing. Okay, I notice the second thing they give me is the second derivative. So I'm going to make a second derivative chart. And they tell me though here that the second derivative is always bigger than zero. So there's no number to put on my number line, but I do know that number is always going to be positive. So what does that tell me about my graph? That tells me that my graph is always going to be concave up like a cup. So now I'm ready to draw my graph using that information. Now I don't know specific points on my graph other than zero, zero, and two, zero. So this is where we might have graphs that are a little bit different. Okay, I know that my graph, and I need to be concave up the whole time, I know that my graph is going to decrease till I get to 1, and then it's going to increase. And I know that I have to go through these points. So I'm going to, and whoops, I should have, we'll pretend like I went through that point, um, till I get to 1, and then I know it's going to increase after that. And notice I have a graph, and let's just make sure it meets the characteristics. It is increase, it's decreasing till it gets to x equals 1, and then it's increasing after that, so that one works. And then f is always concave up. And notice this picture is always concave up like a cup. And it does go through the point 0, 0, and 2, 0. So I've now sketched a function that has those characteristics. Alrighty, let's look at one. This time, notice I was given a picture of f prime, and it asks me to use that to sketch a graph of the function f and f double prime. So we know f prime. What I usually like to do is try to make myself a derivative chart because I think that's kind of helpful. And if I'm given the derivative, I want to look at the critical numbers. So where does the derivative equal 0? I notice that the derivative equals 0 at x equals 1 and x equals 3. So I'll go ahead and put that on there. And then from here, let's look at what's happening with the derivative before I get to 1. So before I get to 1, I notice that all of my derivative values are negative. And then between 1 and 3, I notice that all of my derivative values are positive. And then after 3, I notice that all of my derivative values are negative. So what does that tell me about my function? That means that my function is increasing until, I, oops, it's decreasing until I get to 1. And then it's going to increase from 1 to 3. And then I also know that it's going to be um, decreasing after 3. Okay, so I'm going to try to draw a picture of f based on that. Okay, so um, I don't know what's happening at 1 and 3. I don't know where the points are, so I get to just make that up. I think I'd like to have the point 1, 2. 
So I know that I need to decrease till I get to x equals 1. So I'm going to decrease till I get to x equals 1. And then I know that I need to increase till I get to x equals 3. So I need to make 3 go up there somewhere. So I'm going to increase till I get to 3. And then I notice that I have to decrease after 3. So after 3, I need to go back down. And so f is going to look something like that. I need to decrease and then increase and then decrease. Okay. Now the next thing that it asked me to do is to draw a picture of what f double prime looks like. So what we're going to do is I'm going to um, try to make a maybe a chart of what f double prime would be. Okay, if f prime is kind of the function that I'm looking at, f double prime would be the derivative of f prime, and the derivative we know is just the slopes of the tangent. So when I'm looking for f double prime here, I'm just looking at the slopes of the tangents. Okay, so I'm looking at the slopes of the tangents. So if I'm drawing slopes of tangents here, I notice that the slopes of my tangents are all positive until I get to x equals 2. So I'm actually going to put 2 on my chart, and they're positive till I get there. And then it's just 0 right up at the top. And then the slopes of my tangent lines after 1 are all negative. Okay, so basically um, one thing that's telling me is that my graph is concave up till I get to 2, and then it's concave down after that. Whoops. So I actually should make this kind of do more down like a frown. The other thing, if I'm trying to draw f double prime from here, I know that f double prime is positive, and then it's negative, and it's 0 at 2. So if I want to draw f double prime, let's go to 2. I know that f double prime is 0 at 2. So I'm just going to put that point right there. And then all of my values are positive till I get to 2. So positive values are above the axis. So I know they're positive till I get to 2. And then all of my derivative values are negative after that. So negative values would be down below. And so that's what a picture of f double prime would look like. Um, one thing, notice my f, it started out a little bit more complicated. And then f prime got a little simpler. And then f double prime even got simpler. And that should always happen with our derivatives. Okay, let's try another one because I know these are extremely abstract. We'll just try to weed through it. Okay, let's draw an f prime chart. If I, this is f prime. I would like to know the critical number, so I want to know where does f prime equal 0. And we'll pretend that it touches through 1. I think that's what I intended. So we've got negative 2, we've got 1, and we've got 3. Okay, if I look at the value of f prime before negative 2, all of my values are positive. Okay, and I'm just looking at those are positive y values. They're above the x-axis. Okay, between negative 2 and 1, all of my values are below the x-axis. Those, those are all negative y values. <clears throat> between 1 and 3, all of my values are positive y values. And then after 3, all of my y values are negative. So what does that tell me about my function? I know it's increasing until I get to negative 2. And then we're going to decrease for a while. And then I'm going to increase for a little bit more. And then I'm going to decrease again. Okay, so if I want to draw a picture of what f looks like, we're going to go ahead. Um, I'm going to start something at negative 2. It doesn't matter what I'm starting. I think I'll have it be negative 2, 1 this time. Okay, so I know that I need to increase till I get to negative 2. So I'm going to increase till I get to negative 2. And then I need to decrease until I get to x equals 1. So I know I need to go down till I get to x equals 1. And I can stop it wherever I want because I don't know for sure where it stops. <clears throat> and then um, between 1 and 3, I know I need to increase till I get to 3. And I can just make it go up however I want. Stop right there, I guess. And then after 3, I know that it has to decrease again. So it's going to look, whoops, I should make it turn right there. So it's going to look something like that. All right, and notice I did get this is more complicated than f prime. Okay, now let's take a look at f double prime. And remember again, f double prime, we're going to be looking at the slopes of the tangents. Okay, on this one, if you recall the f prime, we were just looking at are the y values positive or are the y values negative. But here we're going to look at the slopes of the tangents. <clears throat> So if I look at the slopes of the tangents, I notice my slopes are negative until I get to x equals negative 1. Okay, then it's 0 at negative 1. And then my slopes are all going to be positive till I get to x equals 2. And at 2, again, it's going to be 0. And then after 2, I notice that the slopes of my tangent lines are negative. So if I'm going to draw my f double prime chart, my f double prime picture, 
I know that at negative 1 and at 2, my second derivative actually equals 0. And then before that, I know that my values are negative. So all of my y values are going to be negative, so I'm going to be below the x-axis. Then all my y values are going to be positive. And then after 2, all my y values are going to be negative once again. So that's what my f double prime would look like. And notice again, I went from something complicated, then it's not quite as complicated, and then it's even simpler yet. So that is how we would actually use f, f double prime, and f to analyze graphs.